Hello in La La Land. We bring you from the studio where there's a brand new camera, which we're being mechanech today in class. We're very proud of Nala getting this new camera. We love everything Nala does. We thank the technician, Mrs. Libby Bomzer. And uh, we begin now our new Sefer of Malachi. I must tell you that uh, I struggled over Treyasar, not understanding the Mashal, not understanding the words, but Malachi, he's got a few very straight, straight points, and his words are beautiful. We know them from songs, we know them from from Tvila, it'll resonate very nicely with us. Today's shir, as always, is Lila Nifus Rachel Leah Basu Chaim Tzvi, Allah Shalom, she should have a lichtiga gan Eden. The Gemara says in Baba Basra, it discusses the authors of the Nevi'im and the Sifrei Tanakh. Malachi remains a question, Malachi remains a mystery. One opinion is that Malachi is Ezra, the great scribe and leader of the people at the time of the Second Temple. The Talmud says that if not for Moshe, the Torah would have been given through Ezra. And yet another opinion, uh, yeah, 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 is that Malachi is Mordechai. And yet a third opinion is that Malachi is neither any of the above, but an anonymous person, as his name applies, Malachi, my agent. As a matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, I really want you, when we learn this, to have the Navi in front of you. If I'm not mistaken, in the beginning of the third parak. Yes, beginning third paragraph it begins. Hini nishalech malachi fina derech lefanai. I'm sending you my agent, and so it's not clear if he's talking about himself as that agent, malachi, my agent. Now this messenger is going to say the prophecy at the beginning of this momentous time that the Jewish people are just returning from the exile in Bavel, few in number, and not very strong in spirit. And looming ahead of them is the enormous task of rebuilding their land, capital, and the temple. And Malachi is deputized to give them this charge, a charge for change, and direct them to accomplish what Hashem desires from them. The Anshik Knesset HaGdola formed the government at the time of his return from Bovel. The head of the Anshik Knesset HaGdola was Nehemiah and Ezra, and the Talmud affirms that the final three Nevi'im, meaning the end of Tresar, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi were also part of the government. Hence, when Malachi gives Musr, when he chastises the people, he's speaking as an insider. As an insider, not just as an outsider. Uh, many of the names speak as outsiders from the government. Hosea, Amos, they were outsiders. It is so much easier to critique from the outside, and the picture is very different when you are responsible. Uh, here's a very good example, and here I give credit to Rabbi Wein, who highlighted this to me, Beryl Wein. Uh, it says in Sarah that Eldad and Medad prophesied in the camp, and the prophecy was very negative against Moshe and Yeshua. So Yeshua said, Moshe Adoni Klaim, let us destroy them. And Rashi defines how are you going to destroy them? What can Yeshua be referring to? So Rashi defines Klaim to mean destroy them. Hetil Alehem Tsarchetzibur, place government responsibilities upon them, and they will disappear by themselves. In other words, it's a very chastising experience to implement ideas in part of the government when you have responsibility that eats away at a person. So therefore, he's an insider, Malachi, and he's eligible to give Musr. Now, as members of the government, Zechariah, Chagai, Malachi, they can give provided guidance to the society they are ruling. Now, the three prakam, the three chapters of Malachi deal with the problems of the Second Temple, but it would be foolish to believe that this Navi, and we've stressed this many a time, is restricted to the time that he speaks. He's speaking 350 years prior to the Common Era, and he's dealing with problems that Jewish people have to grapple with to this very day. He begins by telling us that the prophecy is a burden. There is no magic wand to wave, and he understands the problems and the, of the Jewish people. They are indeed a burden. So let's open up Malachi, Perik Aleph, Pasuk Aleph, Oh, one more, let me just, one more thing about introduction, which I'd like to mention before I get to his message. Also, well, the message of Malachi is that uh, he's trying to take people back from their apathy and rekindle within the true spirit of their religion. He shows them that the people that they're fetching and they're belly aching and their grievances are really unfounded. And he insists, very interesting how he insists on something, but he... With all of insistence, he is not so firm. He insists that the temple ritual must be restored and the religious obligations of the priestly duties and the priestly duties must be punctiliously discharged. 
And then if this is done, if we do all the commandments that the, Nevi'im, that the Kohanim are supposed to do, then prosperity of the people will be assured. Yet, although Malachi advocates a strict temple ritual, he is not a formalist. Neglect of the temple reveals a lack of reverence, a lack of faith, a lack of love of God. We'll see soon that, not, that Malachi really gives it to people for being treacherous, he calls it. And the spirit which underlies these observances for which he pleads. And yet, and yet, he's not a formalist insofar as he rises above the formal ritualism when he gives expression to the high ethical standards of the earlier prophets. He vigorously denounces all those wrong behaviors, pronouncing swift justice upon the sorcerers, the adulterers, the perjurers, those who oppressed the widows and the orphans. We'll find this particularly in the third chapter. And in an indignant outburst, he condemns even the divorce and intermarriage as acts of treachery against God. Bad enough 